Hey everyone, John here, and today we are going to be working on a new stencil tutorial series. We're going to be making an endless runner. Alright, so the first thing you're going to do is create your game. I just uh, created mine and named it Endless Runner. So, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go into scenes and we are going to create a new scene. I'm going to just call it the level. And for the background color, is going to be, I want a sort of a sky color, so I'm going to do a dark vertical gradient of dark blue and light blue and then hit create that's perfect that makes a nice sky all right so next what i'm going to do is for this tutorial i just need to save this all right so for this tutorial i made some expertly colored and designed sprites um that i'm going to upload that you can download in the description and so we're going to make our own tile set so we're going to go into tile sets, create a new one. I'm just going to call it ground because it's just ground. I don't need anything else. And then I'm going to set the scale to 1x and then choose image. And then in the endless runner folder that you'll download, there's this PNG called ground, 32 by 32. That's perfect. So everything there is perfect. And I'm going to add. Now I have that ground tile. So now if I go back to the scene, I can use this ground tile and I can sort of draw out some ground there. That's perfect. All right. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my dashboard and go to actor types and I'm going to make the player. I'm just going to name the player. Hit create. And I'm going to add an animation. Click here to add frame. Scale to 1x. And I'm going to choose the image. This pixel guy is perfect. There. And now I'll put him on my scene. I'll snap into the grid by hitting the grid and then hitting the magnet button to snap to grid. Right there, perfect. I can turn that off. So now I have my pixel guy on the screen. And then I'm going to quickly make the rest of my sprites. So I have small spike. Small spike will be the small spike. It's just a small spike. And then uh, big spike. So this game, so an endless runner game is, oops, an endless runner game is uh, a game that is infinite and you can jump usually and you're usually forever going right on the screen. So like uh, geometry, well, not geometry dash because it's not endless, but um, uh, Flappy Bird could be considered an endless runner, I suppose. Uh, the Google offline dinosaur game could be considered an endless runner. Um, I, uh, let's see, I'm trying to think of more, but basically endless runners are pretty popular, I'd say, and, uh, they're actually pretty easy to make. So that's what we're going to be doing today. So I'm just going to finish importing my sprites here. I think this is the last one, the coin. All right, coin. Perfect. All right. So now I have all my sprites. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to make it so that the, our character here can jump. So if we go into events, add event, we're going to do input and keyboard. So the control we're going to use is action one, which will probably be the space bar. So if you want to change that, you can go into settings and then uh, actions, 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 controls, sorry, controls. And then action one is set to Z by default. I'm just going to click it, highlight this blue. And hit spacebar. That's good. And then if I want more, I can hit plus. I'll add W and the up arrow key. So that's all the that's all the uh, keys that I'll add for. Our, I'll just call it jump. The jump action. And hit OK. So when jump is pressed, then I'm going to go into I believe it's in actors motion. And let's see. Um, I'm going to do a set velocity, or yes. So set velocity to, I believe zero is up and speed. I'm going to try five. And then on the level, I'm going to go to the physics and make sure the gravity vertical is set to, I'll try 40 for now. All right, so I'm going to test that and make sure that that works. Might have to tweak some numbers. Okay, so 
<laughs> that num those numbers aren't working, so I'm going to try some different numbers. Let's see. So 0 is right, so I'll try negative 90 to go up. And speed is probably a little bit too little, so I'll try 20. Let's see if that works. All right, so I'd say that that's pretty good. However, I notice a couple problems. I can just jump infinitely. All right, so what I'm going to do, first I'm going to try speed 40. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to make it so that I can only jump, I'll say, twice before touching the ground. So I'll set velocity to that. But I'm going to, first I'm going to make an attribute. And I'm going to call it jumps. And this is going to be a number. It's going to be a number. And then I'm going to attributes tab. And jumps default value is going to be 2 because we're going to have a, be able to double jump. So then I'm going to say, up here I'm going to say if. I'm going to go to comparison, grab this equals. I can go back to my attributes and grab this. So if jumps, actually, sorry, not equals. I'm going to grab if jumps is greater than. So if jumps is greater than zero, then we can jump. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into here and go into setters. And I'm going to set jumps to, and go in here and get math, get a minus. I'm going to set jumps to jumps minus one. So every time you lose a jump, every time you jump, you lose a jump. What I'm going to do is I'm going to add event, a collision event. So I'm going to say anytime it collides between a, a member of group. So the group is going to be tiles. So anytime oneself, it's an actor of tiles. So anytime we touch the floor, then I'm going to go into attributes here, setters, and I'm going to set jumps back to two. So this should work. I'm going to test the game. And I forgot to rename this. I'm going to rename this to uh, check touching ground. All right, so something that I notice is that, first of all, 40 is too much. I'm going to try 30. And a bug fix that I found, it, you can actually jump three times if you have this set to zero. So I'm going to actually set it to one. That way you can only jump twice. All right, so the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to make the game spawn our enemies. So I'm going to go into the level, go into events. I'm going to add event, so every, so it would be in every n seconds, so time, so every n seconds, so I'll say, I'm going to make an actually a game attribute for this, and I'm going to call this uh, spawn time, it's going to be a number, and the initial value will be 5 seconds, or, yeah, 5 seconds is probably good, All right, so if that doesn't show up for you immediately, you can hit control R to reload it, and that should work, all right, so do every spawn time seconds. It starts at five. So th right now it's do every five seconds. And I'm going to rename this to spawn enemies. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get an attribute here and I'm going to name it rand for a random number. It's going to be a type number. So in numbers and text, I'm going, actually, sorry, I didn't need to do that. I'm going to go into attributes and remove that because I forgot there is a built-in function on stencil to get a random number. So flow, I'm going to say, actually, no, I am going to need that attribute because I want it to be the same number. All right, so rand type number equals, all right, there. So every n seconds, I'm going to say set rand to a random integer, so a, whole, a random whole number between 0 and 2, or 0 and 100. All right, and then I'm going to say if, so, and then I'm going to grab a greater. So if, and I'm going to go to attributes, getters, and rand. If rand is greater than 50, say so if rand is greater than 50, then I'm going to spawn a uh, 
if range is greater than 50, then I'm going to spawn a small spike. I'm going to duplicate that for now. Grab that right here and duplicate it. Actually, no, I don't. So I'm going to say otherwise if rand is greater than, uh, say, 20. Otherwise, if rand is greater than 20, that's going to spawn a big spike. Actually, this seems a little bit too much. I'll make this 60 and 30. And then I'm going to say otherwise, we're going to spawn a bird because the bird's probably going to be the hardest to avoid. All right. So if rand is greater than 60, otherwise rand is greater than 30, otherwise there. All right, so now I'm going to write the spawn code. So I'm going to search spawn. Sorry, not spawn. I'm going to search create. And then and create actor type at x and y. Create actor type. I'm going to grab one of those everywhere. All right. So create, choose actor type. So the first one is small spike. The second one is big spike. And the third one is bird. Actually, you know what? I'll make the second one bird and the third one big spike because big spike actually is probably going to be harder to avoid than bird. And then, so to get some good values in here, I'm going to go to the level. I'm going to go to the scene, grab out actors, turn on grid and magnetize. So small spikes location is going to be right there. So that's 640, 416. 640, 416. And then big spike, my guess is that big spike will be the same, but it's always good to check. Big spike is going to be 640, 416. It's the wrong level, there we go. 640, 416. And then the bird, I want it to be at 640, but it's going to be random location from random location from there to here. So 352 to 128. Okay. So the bird is going to be at 640. And then I'm going to go into numbers and text, grab this random integer. So what did I say? I said 352 or 128 and 352. So between 128 and 352. I think that's a good range. I'll delete those birds. You just gotta use a select tool, drag a box around them, and hit the delete, delete key. All right, so that's good. And I would check that it's working, but it wouldn't do anything right now because it spawned off screen and we couldn't see them. So I'm going to go, first I'm gonna go into my small spike here. Go into, actually I'm going to, let's see. All right, so to make our enemies go left, I'm going to create a behavior actually. So I don't have to rewrite code a lot. So I'm going to go into actor behaviors here and click create new one. Design modes, perfect. I'm going to name it go left. Hit create. No, I do not need the crash course, thank you. All right, so then when updating, actually, I don't even need when updating. I can just do, uh, I can just do uh, when creating. And I'm going to say, I'm going to go into actors, motion, and set the x speed to, let's see, I'm going to try negative 20. That might be too fast. All right, and I can go into my enemies now. I'm going to, first I'll do small spike. So first, physics. This does not need to rotate and does not need to be affected by gravity, and it cannot be pushed. So it doesn't, uh, otherwise it would sort of just flop there. Then I'm going to behaviors. Choose a behavior, and then all, go left, choose. And then same thing for the big spike. Physics, cannot be pushed, no. Sorry, normal, no. No, 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 there we go. And then behaviors, and then add, go left. And then finally, the bird is going to have physics, not affected. Not rotate, cannot be pushed, behaviors, add behavior, go left. Okay, that was a lot, but it's all good. So I'm going to test that to see if it works, and I want to make sure that the uh, go left works and that the enemies work and that uh, the level spawning code works. All right.
right? So I can jump. My jumps are perfect. Yep, there we go. It's spawning every five seconds. And it j right now it just pushes me off the screen. All right, yep. So it just looks like we're going past. And there's spikes and random birds attacking us. All right, also one thing I noticed is that this guy is sort of far to the left, so I'm actually going to move him over. So I'm just going to delete him, and then I'm going to draw a new one so, so I can grid snap. I'm going to put him right here. It's about rare. Put him right there. All right. There we go. If it doesn't delete, just try it again. Sometimes it's a little glitchy like that. All right, so that's perfect. And... Now, I think what I'm going to do is call it a day because I think that is perfect for this video. If you enjoyed, please like and subscribe and comment to see, to tell me <laughs> what you would like to see in the future videos. Uh, thanks for watching. Goodbye.